Thank you for watching. Uh, again, uh, Yeti Double XL video. I'm, I'm nearing completion, uh, so I'm really getting close to having the thing done right now. Actually, all the technical stuff is uh, done after this video. So uh, this video is going to be about the wiring. There will be a lot of back and forward because uh, it's a really complicated story to tell. And I hope that I won't skip anything in explaining uh, what I actually did over here. Now, Double XL. Two motors, uh, two transmission cases. One of the motors is going to power the front. Uh, all the motors, by the way, Castle 1515 uh, motors, 2200 kV. And one motor is just going to power the rear axle. In between the transmission cases, I have not put uh, like a, a linkage or whatnot. They're not connected by a drive shaft. So the front transmission case is just going to power the front and the rear transmission case is just going to power the rear. Uh, you can do this in uh, several different ways. I chose to do it like this just because I want to have a dig set up on this car. If you are running two ESCs uh, in one car, you can do a number of things. One of the things is you can just use a regular uh, Y splitter on your second channel, which means that you evenly uh, distribute the power to one uh, ESC and to the other ESC that will both get the same input signal and that way you will be able to drive it. What I want to do, however, I want to be able to disengage the rear or disengage the front or uh, overdrive or underdrive the rear or the front. And I want to be able to do all that uh, just by using my radio uh, sort of like on the fly. Um, this is my Fataba 4PL. The Fataba 4PL has a setting for dual ESC. If you enable that setting, at least I figured it out uh, eventually how it worked. If you uh, turn on that setting, what it will do is it will mimic what you're doing on the second channel. So it will mimic what you're doing on the throttle channel and it will convert that and put that on the fourth channel as well. So the input that you give with the throttle, you will see that on channel two and on channel four, exactly the same. You can adjust it uh, if you need to do that. Uh, in the menu and that's the easiest way to sort of do that. It will enable me to disengage uh, front and rear just by uh, using this switch and how I need to fine tune that later on I will figure that out. Uh, for now it was just a matter of uh, getting it going. Uh, motors, I've covered that. The ESCs, the ESCs that I'm using uh, in this car, initially I was going for the Mamba Monster 2 ESCs uh, by Castle Creations, just because I've had really good luck with, uh, with that ESC in my uh, regular Yeti XL. But uh, there has been an updated version out or updated, it's completely new. The Mamba Monster X is now released, also by uh, Castle Creations. Waterproof, all that good stuff. So I picked up two of those and uh, I got one sitting in the back over here and I got one sitting in the front. Now this is quite a long chassis of course. So you also need to stretch all those wires to make sure that they actually come from the receiver box which is still located in the stock position that they actually go all the way to the back. Uh, that took a tiny bit of uh, figuring out. Also the location of the ESC took a tiny bit of uh, figuring out. So I decided to put it in the fuel cell in the back. I did however need to make uh, an opening in the top lid of that uh, fuel cell. If you are familiar with, uh, with this car uh, or with any type of a Yeti because uh, the smaller version actually also has one of those uh, fake fuel cells sitting in the exact same position as you see it over here. Uh, there's a fair bit of room in that uh, fuel cell. I drew up uh, well sort of like a, a, an outline of what I wanted to uh, cut out, what I needed to cut out. Uh, put the top lid in my uh, X-Carve in my CNC machine and I machined uh, a gap out of that top lid just to make sure that the cooling fin actually can draw in some uh, fresh air to cool down the ESC. The same drawing, I also use that to make uh, a custom carbon fiber cradle in the front. Uh, but in the front I created sort of like a sandwich construction with uh, a bottom plate in carbon fiber that's actually wide enough to accommodate that uh, Mamba Monster X ESC. And uh, I put two uh, M3 bolts through it, bolted those down just to make sure that I could actually fit that uh, clamp piece over the top and keep the ESC in place where I want to have it. Now with that, all the positioning was done uh, in the last episode. You may have seen that I uh, redid the top plate to uh, house these two uh, blower shrouds, also by uh, Castle Creations, and to make sure that everything is nice and sturdy and that actually uh, everything sits into place where I want to have it. 
Um, after that, you're left with uh, a lot of wiring. Now, there's, there's several different ways to go about the wiring. If you read up online, some people uh, prefer soldering stuff up in parallel. Uh, I just decided to go with a, sort of like a regular setup. So I decided to put them in series, uh, one for the front, one for the back, and not stuff going parallel and then splitting it out again afterwards. Uh, you risk draining your battery, so that's not something that you want to do. And if there is a, a tiny performance difference uh, in the batteries, for example, then that is something that you will easily overcome because it will not be that big of a deal as long as you run four similar batteries. The batteries that I will run in this car, uh, Dynagy batteries, 6500 milliamps from the top of my head uh, with a 65C rating, 11.1 uh, volts, all of them. So I will be able to fit two on uh, this side of the car and two on the other side of the car. Uh, the batteries that sit on this side of the car will be powering the front and the batteries that sit on the right side of the car will be powering the rear. Testing that out, that's like one of the most uh, crucial parts. I needed to make sure that I had no wire pinches going on, that uh, my ESC was actually uh, getting a good, uh, getting a good uh, reception, so I needed to completely trace it down to the receiver. Power up the rear first and test that one out before eventually disabling the power wire from the ESC to the receiver. Why did I do that? You only need to have one power source going to the receiver and I decided to use the power source from the front. That sounds really complicated. Uh, let me get a bit further into that. The ESC of the front is plugged into the receiver and uh, uh, the battery is being hooked up to the ESC. They have uh, the power going into them and then by hooking up the ESC wire, this is if you've never hooked one up, uh, this may come in handy. By hooking up the ESC wire to the receiver, you actually power up the receiver and make sure that you have signal with your uh, radio. Uh, in return, that receiver also powers up the steering servo, so you have a, a good amount of power drawing going on in, in this guy's the front. Now, with the back, uh, this ESC also uh, receives power, of course, uh, from the side over here. So you have the same amount of power also going to that uh, receiver and that's something that you do not need. So what you want to do is in the very end you want to just disconnect the center uh, plug of your uh, servo cable that comes from your ESC. So that's the red wire, you just pull that one out, fold it back, heat shrink it and then plug it in. But for testing you do need it because I tested both of them separately. In testing both of them separately, you can also make sure that they actually perform at the exact same rate. Uh, how you do that is you just uh, take your Castle Link system. Everybody who has ever owned a Castle uh, brushless system will know, I think, exactly what I'm talking about. You hook up your Castle Link, take it to your computer or your laptop. You can do an exact reading of the amount of RPMs that, uh, that the motor is putting out, uh, what's happening to it temperature wise, and you can set it up however you want. Now these two are exact matches, so there's nothing uh, different between the two. The only difference of course that I have is the front power source uh, is also running the receiver and the steering servo. So I wanted to match that one up. So what I did is I still had these two blower shrouds to hook up. I actually decided to draw power for those two from the rear ESC. I hope this still makes sense. I needed to lengthen up that wire anyway just because it's so far from the receiver. So what I used for that is uh, I used two uh, Y harnesses, two uh, servo harnesses. You will find those in, uh, for example, uh, your high-tech servos. If you uh, buy a high-tech servo, chances are that you will fill, find one of those uh, splitter cables in there. So I used two splitter cables just to be able to power up these two uh, blubber shrouds. That way I think I have a fairly even uh, power draw from both sides of, uh, of the car. So uh, from the front and the back, the front having the servo and the receiver and the rear then having these two additional uh, blower shrouds to power. So in terms of uh, being able to run my car as long as possible, I think that does the trick. Well, I think this was a complicated story, but, uh, uh, well, an interesting one nevertheless. Um, the connectors that I use, uh, Castle 6.5mm, these are the easiest connectors that I've ever come across 
to solder on the only thing that you really need to keep in mind is that you put the plastic over the wires before you start soldering those uh, bullet connectors on or call them bullet connectors um, you need to really have a good amount of wire to push it over just to make sure that you don't burn the plastic in the process so that's something that you need to keep track of I also like to heat shrink everything before eventually well in this case I use some uh, braided I think people call it, refer to this as a computer cable uh, uh, hoses or computer cable uh, uh, covers and uh, I think that just really cleans up the look uh, the power wire or the signal wire for the ESC I ran that one uh, inside the chassis so you really don't see that one all that much uh, apart of course from these two anacondas sitting uh, on the side that uh, well, over there you can really tell that something is going on but it's not easy to hide all the power that's going on in uh, a car like this if you want to be ahead of what I'm doing over here on uh, YouTube, go check out all of the links in the description box. There's a link to my Instagram, there's a link to my Facebook page. Those two are a tiny bit more up to speed than what I'm actually doing over here. For a number of reasons, one of them is my upload speed is really not all that great. So go check those out. If you have any questions, if I missed a step perhaps in explaining what I did over here or if something just isn't clear, uh, leave comments in the box below. For example, I can imagine, uh, are you going to add lights? Yes, I'm going to add lights. I'm going to add uh, two LEDs in the front, most likely. And I want to see if I can uh, get a light bar that really fits this car, just because I think it will really top that look off. If you have not subscribed yet, please do, just to see how it uh, will turn out eventually. Uh, I got a few really cool things uh, in mind for, uh, for a paint scheme on this car. And I cannot wait for the snow to finally disappear so I can actually go out and test run it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and bye-bye. Back on.